first I want to tell that thing yes. that uh, because you know, people cannot go to the hairdressers, people tend to come to my gym to buy hair trimmer. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, hair treatment, the <laughs> hair treatment seems to be the the uh, the the good business seller, for for during, product. for during this time lah. You know, okay. okay. I think we look at it uh, on on two things lah. Number one, uh, MCO is not lifted, and number two is MCO lifted. Then what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. If the MCO is not lifted, we all know it is status quo. Yes. Right? This is going to be how we are now, but. How shall we manage the economy part of it? It's very important. And I think the government has understood, as you can see by, by this week, they have announced that certain businesses can open, say, twice a week. Okay. Uh, so I think the government understands that there are a lot of things there that people need. Uh, and if they don't open for business, number one, what people need, they cannot get. And number two, it, the economy suffers. Mm -hmm. And I give you some specific example during MCO. Yes. We have a lot of challenges, seriously, uh, dealing with authorities. They want to follow the law on one hand, and we in businesses, forget the profit part, huh? forget it's not all money making here. We want okay. to serve our customers. We in business have been trained all this while, serve your customer, serve your customer the best way you can. And what happens now, somebody walks into a Maidin store. You know, we have to lock off our areas which are non-essential. Oh. Non-essential is subject to one interpretation. Someone says that my, my hair is graying, I need my <laughs> something to put on my hair. That's it's essential. not essential for the police. Yes. Uh, not essential for the authorities. For that lady, it's very, very essential. <laughs> but, but I'm not going that far. I think what I'm trying to say here is that there are people who come to my store and they say, can I get the guest host? Because my guest tank, the host, but the, to get the guest host, they have to go upstairs, which I've locked down. Because I'm not allowed to operate. I got people walking in and asking for rice cookers. I say, sorry, rice cooker is not essential. You say rice cooker is not essential for you because you got rice cooker in your house. I never cook rice in my house. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a bachelor who eats out all the time. But now I'm stuck in my house. I need to cook rice. The people walking in, they say, can I buy a dough, dough mixer? I say, why? Not essential. You say, no more bread in your store. I have to make my own bread. So, you know, these things sometimes we in the business down there, we understand the customers, we understand, we want to serve them. Sometimes you can see them crying there, you know, tolong lah, you know. But Be flexible. Uh, the authorities come to us and, you know, they lock us down. Uh, I, I, I think because we are dealing with people, uh, we have the heart to serve our customers. So this is a very big challenge anyway during MCO. We understand what the authorities are doing. We understand they don't want people to be shopping around, spending hours in the store. Uh, we understand, but where is this balance? Uh, in, this, in this world, we have a balance. We must learn how to balance. I think the more important point that I want to make is that the government needs to allow business to, to operate even during MCO if the businesses promise to follow the SOPs of the health ministry. See, like you enter a Maiden hypermarket. Number one, we take your temperature. Number two, we give you hand sanitizer. Number three, there are markers one meter apart where you must stand. We don't allow our you for you to crowd around the cashiers, uh, crowd around our weighing counters. Even when you want your chicken to be cut, you got to queue up. So there are many responsible retailers there. I mean, let's not talk about the lady selling nasi lama at two in the morning where 20 people going there. I mean, I think that people must be punished, of course, because yeah. they are breaking the law. But there are many people who are responsible. I'm not talking about my date. I'm not talking about the small uh, FMB outlet. You tell the small FMB outlet, not more than five customers can come into your place. Uh, put your chest, uh, put your chest one meter apart. I'm sure he will listen because he needs the business. He wants to serve his customers. So I think if this MCO is extended, I hope that the authorities will look at the business, right, and look how it can help the people 
because you know no man wants to beg money from the government whether it is the small hairdresser out there or the small fmb you know we, we we are not begging for money here all businesses all entrepreneurs want to stand on their own feet so if the government can allow of course under strict rules follow the rules the fmb you know the mom and pop shop you know whoever they are i think uh, malaysians tend to be very responsible mm -hmm. and i've seen this even in my store only on the first or second day uh, people do panic buying and you know all this thing but after a while they already understand i think most people most malaysians are very responsible so let's try to do this let's show the government that we are very responsible people i think the government is waiting the rules will still be there mm -hmm. huh? i mean we have already started to install in our stores in a hypermarket there's a video going around mm -hmm. where you go to a tunnel and we de use that so-called sanitizing so we sanitize your whole body as you go into my yeah? because we know this is not going to be uh, just for today i think it's going to happen for the next three weeks three months or six months until this so-called virus, shall we say, should I be put to scan, you see, right? Mm -hmm. So even the MCO is lifted, there will still be so many uh, controls there out there in terms of social distancing. And mm -hmm. there's no, there's no two ways about it. None of us, we are not like, uh, I would want to mention which president, you know, uh -huh. who says <laughs> no, business is important, uh, yeah. the economic loss for business will cost more life. I think we in Malaysia businesses and our prime minister, all of us are very responsible. We don't want even one person to lose their life mm -hmm. just because someone can make money. That we will never agree. You see, what is the objective of MCO? MCO objective is to have distancing of people. See? You can see Malaysia, the, the problem actually attributed right from the beginning actually was from big groups of gathering, which was uh, allowed. See? That, that shouldn't be the case. And today, although the DG of uh, MOH is doing a great job, but these are things that is beyond his control because many of them are afraid to come up to do testing because I believe many of them uh, do not have given proper papers, you know, uh, permits. So that's why they went into hiding. So it shouldn't be a blanket uh, sort of, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, banning on the movement of people. Uh, the government should consider giving exceptional cases is it? and in fact many of uh, our members and also other smes who written in or factories uh, to want to operate either they got reply very late or was rejected is it mm -hmm. so th there must be some kind of understanding uh, uh, where as uh, just now dr Maidin also was mentioning that uh, you know as long as the sop being followed but of course you cannot operate just like normal days of, let's say you have 100 workers, perhaps you have to reduce it and uh, to make sure the distancing is there. So as long as the distancing, and uh, the, but essential, uh, what you call it, operations of uh, factories, like, in, like Malaysia is a very important supply chain to the rest of the world. The day we have uh, a meeting with uh, some discussion with Samsung, I didn't even aware that wasn't aware that Samsung actually supply probably 70% of the worldwide chips you know, from Malaysia to the rest of the world. Can you imagine he has supplies problem and he can't manufacture his factory at the stop? Can you imagine the big disruption? You know? And uh, these foreign companies have no direct access to the government and many of them was commenting uh, uh, that they're looking for other alternative sources of moving away from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. This is very undesirable because this will cause a lot of uh, unemployment also to the country. So we have to track with very a lot of uh, skill and care with the foreign FDIs here so as well, besides the SM, SMEs from Malaysia. So we have to be very practical. Like certain aid, certain things like even maintenance of uh, factories and you know, repair of cars, these are very essential. Pet shop could be, you know, uh, all this should be allowed. Uh, even, even for example, if let's say, Pasar Malam, for example, is an open space. If let's say there's some kind of control by authorities, uh, distancing, I, I don't see any issue, but you have to control the crowd. If let's say there's certain kind of control over there, you will not allow certain number of people going there. See, uh, for let's say uh, some kind of marketing which you need to buy. Because if you go online or you buy from the hypermarket, of course it costs much, much more than the normal Pasar Malam you know, or, or 
the normal wet market. So this also another area. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> but but I can tell you, most of the time, I also go to the market on and off to check on prices. Eh? Uh, not because of, just our curiosity. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's definitely, because you see, these people do not have to pay overheads like uh, the hypermarkets and the supermarkets. Eh? But of course, it's different category of customers. Uh, some would like to walk around to, to source for more varieties eh, at the shops. Eh? So what I'm trying to say, uh, there, there should be some kind of uh, mechanics mechanism here to avoid distancing, uh, to have distancing of a uh, crowd. But it should be practical as well, uh, not to only uh, lock down total like MCO. There's nobody allowed to do this to that. But the good thing, the government has uh, taken very good uh, steps to allow online now, you see. So many of the online companies are still surviving. Earlier, it wasn't allowed, see, uh, only partly. So, so the, the freedom and movement of goods for online should be always be allowed, just like in China. It was thriving, isn't it? Example, I was told like uh, the food companies like Grab and Panda, they have more than 10 times of the business and other companies uh, who are doing online would not be as badly affected as others the total shutdown. Mm -hmm. They have drop of 40%, 60% or 50%, still not, not as bad as a total drop of 90 to 100% for some, many of the companies who are not even allowed to operate. Is it? So it's also not good for the economy. So we have to find, if they say should there be an extension, mm -hmm. they, they might have to fine tune this area, we have to work with the government and see how the government yeah. can help. From an industry perspective, of course, uh, I mean, we, we would not like it to be extended as a, as a, because in our business, in this uh, uh, apparel yeah. business, yes. generally, I think the Raya season is very important to us. I think to most of us, I think the sales of Raya can account to account to 25 to 40 percent of the whole year sales. You know, so it's very important, critical. If it's extended, of course, it's not the uh, it's not going going to be good for for us because I think we have lost I think uh, substantial uh, sales to the whole year. There are some of the actually some of the retail outlet actually uh, during peak season we make money, but mm -hmm. the low season we lose money. If we lose that, I think the whole year is gone. This uh, the industry perspective. And of course, for those manufacturers, it's the same thing. If it's uh, extended, now we are refacing uh, cancellation and buyer. Of course, earlier we, we also faced that uh, OC buyer diverting their orders to country which are not shut down. And moving forward, uh, I think if we, we continue to shut down, of course, the, 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 the confidence level will be. There will be more diversion to other places, uh, like especially in China, because they are opening up. So for those exporters, this is another issue. But of course, having said that, of course we, of course we will support the government. If it's uh, like what uh, Dr. Vila has said, that I think life is more important. Uh, this is yeah. our perspective. Uh, of course, we support That's the right. government. If yes. it has to be extended, it has to be extended. Now, I think that is our, our, our view. But when, but of course, we also hope that when if it is extended. We hope that there are one major issue is the wage burden, especially for the bigger company. Like I have said earlier, you see this uh, wage burden because I think most of us, like I say, we probably have a, a, a cash flow to pay a, a one month wages only. Mm -hmm. Meaning that March, most of us shouldn't have problem to pay. No? Then moving forward, April, May, if it's extended, then I think all those uh, minute size of bigger company, they may have uh, they also will face this uh, cash flow problem to pay the wages. Assuming you are not paying the renter, you are not paying the, 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 the supplier. Mm -hmm. But we still, I think, even we don't pay that, you still have not uh, enough uh, cash to pay the wages. So our view is all the while, the wage burden should be shared because this is a difficult time by the employer, the employee, and the government. But so far, I think the government has played its part, and uh, we em we employer, in fact, there was uh, there was a directive that uh, from JTK to ask us to pay the employee full wages. Then, of course, we of course now the new 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 I mean what the PM has said that we are allowed to negotiate that, you know. But we hope that those uh, people out there, our employee or even our the union will be more understanding because this is the time that everybody has to share. We are not saying that we are not going to pay you, you know. 
So I believe sharing of burden is important because when the thing go too long, I mean, not a single party can shoulder it. They put it away. Even you, it's quite difficult for, for the government to shoulder everything. I mean, in yeah, the world, of course, the government pays percent and the government pays pay 75 percent, not and 50 percent or whatever. But I have not seen one government who can pay 100 percent can shoulder the wage burden. Likewise for the employer. You know, earlier directive, they're asking us to, to pay 100%. To me, that was uh, ridiculous, you know. So now I think we are happier because the government has uh, came up with a, with a much better improved uh, uh, wage subsidy. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, I hope that... Uh, because, because, you see, the problem with this media, some of this is the problem of the media. The media has stretched everywhere that employer must pay full salary. So to make it very difficult for us to deal with our employee. Because in their mind, is that, oh, the directive is we have to pay that full salary, whether they are working, they are not working. Uh, so to them, we say, of course, later on, we have this directive saying that we have to get the uh, So most of them will be standing very firm because all right. see the, see the, they all, all, all saying that we have to pay full. So this is one thing that I'm worried because if it's extended, I think this is one issue that we have to address. Uh, yeah, going back to these questions uh, of uh, wage burden. Uh, yesterday, the PM actually uh, has said uh, they right now encourage negotiation between employers and employees on the terms of their employment, including the option to deduct salaries and to allow unpaid leave during the MCO, which was previously not allowed. Previously, you, uh, we are not allowed, employers are not allowed to terminate ask the employee to take unpaid leave nor deduct their salary. But right now, I think the government side is more open to that as long as we have a, you know, a good and open heart discussion or negotiation with our employee. This, this type of opening, uh, what, what, what kind of uh, impact will it bring to the employer and employee uh, relationship? Of course, we have to bear in mind uh, all the business owners, when we hire, we never have the intention of firing. It's just that all of us need to do it due to circumstance. I think this opening actually is very good for those people who are employing foreign workers. We have to understand the, the subsidy does not apply to foreign workers. Only those uh, employees who are contributing to EIS are entitled to subsidy. So foreign workers actually uh, they are not entitled. And if you, uh, if, it is, if, you if you want to, fo like, to follow the previous directive, meaning that we have to pay them full salary. So they could be staying in the hostel and doing nothing, then we still have to pay full salary. Of course, we employ when we are not so heartless. We think that it has to be, they have to be paid, you know, but definitely not full up. Sure. Because it's, even now we have this problem. Uh, because the, in their mindset is that they are entitled to full salary as they've been, I mean, publicized everywhere. So That's you see, right. when certain, when certain company, they got uh, exemption to start operation mm -hmm. on 50% capacity. Then all these workers will say, hey, how much are you going to pay me? If I stay at home, I'm getting full salary. Now you ask me to go back to work. This one problem. The second problem is, if you say, okay, you will still get the basics at the, the same salary. And then they will say, why, why, why me? Why not no, 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 the, the, the other workers? You understand? So I think a lot of operational problems. So I think it's a good thing that the government has came, uh, give us this uh, flexibility. Actually, that helps us a lot. Help us a lot, actually. We are very thankful yeah. for that. Yeah. You see, I, I think that is something where we engage with the government. And then this is something uh, leeway has been given to the uh, staff and the employer. I think it's a very good thing because uh, at least there's an avenue now for negotiation, you see. And I believe many of the good staff who have been with the company, uh, like some, many of our staff, they're, they're willing to compromise, you see. Uh, so I think that is very important. There's an avenue here to resolve at least, to alleviate the issues between uh, uh, the employer and the employee. And uh, I think this is very good. Uh, uh, and it's again how we handle uh, with the employees. Uh, one thing I did mention to the employees and also sharing with others, uh, uh, retailers and uh, SMEs that, you see, we have to give them the comfort. Should the business pick up, let's say, towards the end of the year, and then you still make money, and by Chinese New Year or even next year, beginning of next year, we should allow or at least give them a chance uh, 
uh, we have to reward them back. At least, let's say whatever uh, uh, the losses or what you know, uh, the deficit during the period, during the MCO or after that, is it? Mm -hmm. So at least we can give them in terms of bonus or maybe extra share, you know. So that that is something uh, comfort. I think we have to give as well, uh, You know, you may, you may never know because after the MCO till end of the year or so, you may get a big project or you have some new contracts coming in uh, or some. Some sudden search of sales. If let's say the business has improved a lot, I think it's only fair that we pass back uh, to compensate the employees uh, in the right manner. Dr. Wira, you have more than 10,000 workers. Uh, what, what is your take on that? The burden must be greater on your side. Well, uh, the, the Malay proverb is Sapa yang memikul dia lah yang rasa berat lah. You know? The person carrying the weight only knows <laughs> how heavy it is. Huh? Everybody else can just talk, right? But I think the point here uh, is very important. It's number one, I don't think there's enough clarity actually in mm -hmm. terms of the government allowing to negotiate. The government is saying that, but I think uh, people that are earning 2,100 or 2,010, I think, mm -hmm. I don't see any negotiation here allowed. Uh, I think here maybe we are talking about negotiation for people above that 2010. That's my understanding. So if someone can clarify that even the people below the 2010 you can negotiate, uh, that would be another chapter. I but I have one or two suggestions uh, which I think could be useful for how uh, employers can approach this. Mm -hmm. uh, one approach uh, which we can do, of course. Of course, the best approach you say is that, uh, sorry lah, I cut uh, 3,000 above, I cut 50% or 4,000 above, I cut 50 above that, I cut 75 or whatever. In a very simplistic manner, uh, yeah. you cut, you cut. Of course, when you start cutting, don't forget to cut your own salary the most lah. Yes. You know, uh, like mine, my one, I said all the directors pay cut 100%. You see? Wow. 100% cut. Because that is the way to do it. Uh, as a leader, you cannot say, even though I own the company, I myself say 100% cut. Because mm -hmm. I also get paid. You see? So 100% cut first. I think leadership must always by example. So you cut first. I think the first most important thing. The second is that uh, it could be difficult sometimes when you talk to uh, employees, cut your salary. The guy earning 10,000, also you cut 50%, he might not agree to this cut. He uh, says 5,000, a lot of money, boss. You know? Sure. And you also don't want to lose these people. They have sacrificed their life for you seriously. Uh, many people working for me have worked for 15 years, 20 years. And we understand where they're coming from. So my, my suggestion, one method could be that you say, I actually don't have a problem paying you, but I have a cash flow issue. Mm -hmm. It's not I don't want to pay you. I, it's a cash flow issue. So if your salary is 10,000, to make just a simple number, yes. not many people earning 10,000, but just for number. Okay. 10,000, I cut 50%, I pay you 5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the 5,000, uh, actually, I save for you. Save for the next six months. So I'm actually saving, you're actually saving the money with me for the next six months. So I'm actually saving 30,000 with the employer. Mm -hmm. And maybe after this, we just, we don't Allah, we don't Allah. So this is a good time to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, in whichever religion you are, you know? Yes. Then we say, okay, I've taken this uh, five times six thirty thousand dollars. After six months, I will pay you back this in say twenty four installments, mm -hmm. right? So I pay you a thousand five or two thousand five or whatever. Everybody so in did. that way, it helps your cash flow. Uh, after six months, uh, you are doing well. The, the the staff don't feel out of pocket. Hey, mm -hmm. never mind because now I don't have to pay my car loan for six months. I don't have to pay for my uh, my house installment so i don't need the ten thousand i think with five thousand i can survive but the five thousand you can survive with two thousand five but don't go below sometimes two thousand like, because i think it's uh, difficult for them to to, to manage this just one way to manage the the second way of managing is that you normally can tell tell them to take whether you take them to say unpaid leave which they say i'm out of pocket or you say you don't take unpaid leave you actually take leave i save the leave for, for you so next time when I need you or when I need you to pay overtime, 
I use that that sinking fund. Like you know how bank love sinking fund, right? So like a sinking fund. So I keep it there. So when I need you, I draw from the sinking fund. So six months later, I can draw that. You see, so you can draw that money. You can draw your leaves. You can do whatever you want while you're sinking fund. So this seems to be a more uh, palatable way of working with your employees because they, 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 they are there. I mean, not to say they don't want to sacrifice, but you know, everybody has a certain level of uh, commitment sometimes. Commitment. Yeah. So this could be, could be one way to do it. Yeah, good idea. But, but you see, the whole, the, the whole idea about the leeway is that, uh, you see, once the uh, staff were to take the subsidy, of course, they will not come back to, uh, after they compromise, they will not come back and, uh, I mean, what you call that, uh, uh, take action or, or complain about the employer, you see? Mm -hmm. That is the whole idea, see, about this leeway. To begin with, uh, uh, when we hear about that, we can uh, still negotiate with the staff was actually a very welcoming thing because, you see, a lot of our staff have been with us for a long time. As we even have staff as long as 35 years or, or so, you see. So most majority of them are more than 25 years. So we do have a very good and close relationship with our staff. Basically, we treat them almost like a family. Mm -hmm. But sometimes family or team will understand how the boss feel when, you know, no one wants the ship to sink. Sure. So... We, we really hope and uh, use this scenario now that the government says that um, that we can allow to negotiate. We have actually planned certain things, you know, maybe even to the extent when we reopen back, we, we would want to suggest that some staff will probably have to burn their annual leave for, you know, we have, we have a lot of thoughts. We really have a lot of thoughts. We would love to pay them, but sometimes, if we run short of cash, we can't last long. So it's really, uh, uh, most important thing is, it's really not about trying to be the best boss in the world and say, yes, I'm going to pay all my stuff, but what happens if, if I can't last? So this is really a scene that uh, understanding staff will know how we have been treating them these last 30 over years they are with us. We never shortchange any staff over the years. And what was most comforting just now when we have, uh, we, you know, I, I even have a staff who call us up and says that, you know what, I have uh, a suggestion. I don't think I want my pay for April. Why not to pay him, but no touch. I think staff, this time we have to come together and understand. If your boss have always been there supporting you, if, if, by deducting maybe 30% or so, we're not asking not to get your pay. You know, openly say, boss, if we can come back together, uh, let's work this whole thing together. I'm sure I know what kind of boss you are. So we're really hoping for more and more staff will understand this situation and not jump onto it because the media have not been very helpful. Some of our staff may not be the very educated type. They all read the Chinese paper. Yes, you must pay, you must pay, you must pay. So I think to most of them is they are on the understanding that the, the boss must pay. So there again, we are really hoping that this scenario change after tomorrow, you know, that kind of thing. So, and uh, yeah, we yet to meet anyone to talk about it, but we should be really need to have some serious discussion with the, with the team because it's not easy to reach out to so many because it's uh, such a big group. So yeah, we will be definitely reaching out before the MCO opens even. Yeah. I was even told some uh, some hairdressers, uh, which I don't want to quote name, they even signed this thing even before the government say anything. They wanted their staff to sign to agree to only take half salary. We have not even done a single thing like that because we still want to pay. So we wanted to be good boss, but at the same time, we would really like the idea that sometimes it's not just about us. It's I would want... Uh, you know, people who understand to say, yeah, it's about time sometimes we need to come forward and yeah. be good employee. You know, to it's not talk. about boss problem, you know, sometimes employee, you have been enjoying good, you know, a, a good relationship or earning well for a long time. I think sometimes you have to have back the captain in. Yeah, true. 
So, uh, of course, lastly, Entrepreneur Insight, Straight Thought, this, uh, the objective of this show is to give people more uh, positive vibes outside, especially for entrepreneurs. Now, all of us know it's a low season. And uh, the only way that we can help each other is by giving uh, our, you know, entrepreneurs or SME out there more encouragement as well as more uh, words of encouragement as well as the positive vibes out there. Uh, maybe all of our panelists can share some words of inspiration, words of motivation to all our listeners out there because all of you all are in a way the leader of the industry and the icon of the industry. My suggestion to all the business uh, owners is uh, we have to keep jobs. You know, retrenchment should be our last, last resort and and you know, you this will go for unpaid leave, maybe salary deduction before retrenchment. Because if you don't keep the jobs, eventually it affects the economy. When so many people are losing their job, then eventually all business will be affected. The whole national economy will be affected. That's why all this all we have been telling the government, we have to save the employer to save job and save our national economy. So to me, it's try to shoulder on, don't rush to close up your shop. We try to get as much assistance as possible from, from the government, from, 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 from the bank, you know. Then try to shoulder on, so hope for better, better tomorrow. Before uh, summarizing some of the issues here, I think first of all, uh, one area I think uh, probably have been left out in the sense of, uh, what about those victims? You know, uh, the patients, those who have recovered and those who have unable to recover. The insurance company should also, in a way, contribute to at least give them some extra share or some kind of compensation, is it? Mm -hmm. It may or may not be in a contract. I think this is one area that is important as well think, to help these people who are already been suffering. And of course, the frontliners, I think many of us also overlook the police and the army, you know. But most importantly, I can see that the Ministry of Health, the medical staff, I think they are the ones who went through the most torture. Uh, can you imagine when they come back to, when they return home, they can't even go around with the family. They probably have to be isolated as well, is it? Yes. And uh, of course, the government is talking about uh, a COVID law. So they'll be considering about COVID law, just like in Singapore. This also to help to protect everyone in, uh, even if you have a contract, this also to protect everyone, is it? Uh, to ease uh, the contract and also to protect all the interests of everyone, is it? I think that's very important. And lastly, to summarize, I think uh, everyone must sacrifice, as what we mentioned just now, is it? Uh, the banks, the landlords, the government statutory payments, and of course the staff as well who are working with the company. They should also compromise in certain ways to make sure we tie through this difficult period, is it? And I think it's also a test of, uh, lastly, a test of compassion, kindness to each other, and also the gratitude. If let's say you have been successful, it has to be attributes and contribution by other parties, not yours alone, is it? So this one time we have, we, we, we should contribute each and every one to make sure everyone sail through, is it? Uh, in supporting also the government has also contribute in this way uh, lately on the stimulus. And hopeful, hopefully government can also come up with more stimulus to help the other SMEs as well, is it? Well, as entrepreneurs, we should not surrender so easily because this is really a time to test our true greed and you know, the perseverance that we have been building up as entrepreneur. Perhaps treat this season as you know, and somehow got to like learn and unlearn ourselves. There's things that we have not been able to do good before. Just do something different, you know. So treat this as a awakening call. We just got to do something uh, to to align ourselves to, so that we can rise back again instead of moaning about it because um, you know especially to the young entrepreneurs i really think that this is really a call of an awakening it, uh, don't be complacent there's always a uh, rainbow after every storm just like what our you know pm talk about you know there's always sun after the rain right so i i think yes there's always a rainbow after every storm so go uh, go for it and all the best uh, don't surrender so easily. 
I, I just want to address the couple of issues. Uh. Yes. I think, uh, I think number one, of course, uh, we must be very grateful to the government. Uh. Mm -hmm. they, they actually did the MCO. I think all of us, the, all the riot was so unhappy when the government uh, actually announced the MCO. And many were very, very angry with the government. But now that we see, even our neighbor, Singapore, yeah. yes. is going to do a stricter lockdown. Mm -hmm. So for once, for once, we are ahead of our neighbor. You know? yes, yes. I think Malaysia must be very proud to have a government who had been a bit firm, more firm. Uh, and you see what's happening all over the world. That you feel really proud that I think our government took the stand. Uh, whatever happens, uh, the riot might not like us, but life is more important. I think I, I'm very grateful for the government of the day uh, that uh, they took this particular action. The, the second point, I think that uh, in this whole, whole conversation we are having, uh, we have missed out one crucial point. Uh, yeah. is that the banks, uh, the government has asked the bank to extend the loan, mm -hmm. which is very good. But I think uh, we have forgotten that most of us are traders mm -hmm. and we trade. But there's nothing from the bank coming for trade facilities. There, there's no extension for your banker's acceptance, you know. Your banker accepted is due, you got to pay. Your TR is due, you got to pay. And you yes. cannot have a moratorium and then say, uh, okay, la, whatever you owe me, you, let's make it 24 months or six months or whatever it is. Uh, nobody has really thought about this. What happened to all the traders? Mm -hmm. uh, as a trader, this is, I think, the most crucial thing. So someone got to think about this, that these facilities need to have a moratorium and the bank should give a certain uh, percentage extra facilities, temporarily maybe, to tie them over during this tight uh, cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. That is very important. Another point that, that I think now uh, most people, most entrepreneurs will realize how important it is to be part of an association. Mm -hmm. yeah. many, many times before I ask people, hey, join lah, uh, MRA, join bro, join this year, apa pasal? Every month, must, every year must pay money only. What you all can do? All big, big shots sitting there, talk, 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 and nothing happened. <laughs> uh, only got annual dinner, annual dinner party. <laughs> it doesn't matter what association. But you can see now how your association, whether it's the Chinese or the Malay or the Indian association for the matter, are working so hard for their members. You know, and uh, and we have to be very grateful to association people uh, who are working more than their normal. I mean, they are really suffering. You know, the association yeah. people are suffering also. The like I said, the bigger you are, the more you suffer. But because of the experience they have gone through cycles, uh, you see many of us smiling out there, see? Uh, because we have got the stone face. Uh, we have <laughs> gone through life. Uh, we are, you know, we are all. Uh, much older, I and mean, you can see the people on the panel, you see, all grey hair one, you know. <laughs> so, uh, since we have the experience, uh, we can still smile uh, uh, when there's something happening. We know because why? We have got over this before, and we can definitely get over it again. Yes. So, I think this is the most important thing. And even at my age, I find that it's always a learning experience. Now you know the value of family. So I think after this cycle, we all will understand what is family all about. So you know who are your family, you know who are your friends. Mm -hmm. And more important, uh, you also learn who are your good suppliers who will work with you through thick and thin. I got suppliers telling me now, hey, don't worry, 30 years already, you take my good pay later. And entrepreneurs out there, don't worry. The, the gray, gray hair here is telling you we have gone all through before and we can do better again. Yes. Don't worry. Wow. Well said. Uh, well said. And thank you very much, all the panelists, like, uh, to, to summarize uh, the main essence of the key message that you all want to convey out. Of course, first is entrepreneurs out there, please focus on what you can change not so much on what you cannot control or cannot change. For example, the MCO, we cannot control. COVID-19 also is, is not part of the plan. Focus on what are the things that we can really control. And of course, with True Grids, we can really have a chance, a fighting chance to seal through this. 
uh, this is a worldwide pandemic. Uh, everyone also, uh, one way or another, will 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 will, will be impacted with this uh, this this economically. But with our perseverance, definitely we can sail through it. Thanks again, everyone, for your precious time and your precious uh, insights. I'm sure all our reviewers tonight will be benefiting a lot from all the insights that you all share. Thank you a lot again. Uh, may you all stay safe. Thank you, and thank stay you, very nice. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you, you for having me. All right.